as you can see, breaking down the statistics, the statistics and the numbers, VGK and Reborn, a hell of a show uh, by them. Shame we didn't catch the highlight, the beginning play there from uh, FY God, if you will. The sidestep juke play to avoid the sentry, keeping it alive. A hell of a showing from him, and as you can see, based on match damage statistics, that frontliner and AK ZYF on his gyrocopter. And yeah, I'm glad they put that up because obviously Mikasa just making the absolutely great plays throughout the game, but it, it really is telling just how much raw damage in the end comes in the end, huh, huh, comes out from this gyrocopter <laughs> that he's able to get that far ahead and just be in a presence, be a consistent presence in so many of these fights. Yeah, it's so sad when Nahas has to make his own jokes. Went, 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 went. Setting him up. You're hilarious. Oh, Dindy, Dindy, Dindy. It was kind of like. It, we've been talking about how much pressure Dindy, you know, applies with the support from Seneco, but like they, these last, I want to say even the last three games, it's been, you know, Mikasa being shut down, but then always End is just doing everything with his roams. I mean, we could have seen yeah. a 3-0 right now for VGR. And Easy. It, and it's just and in it's such stark contrast, right? Yeah. To what Navi have, Navi no, all tournament long have been the one dictating the pace. They, they have to change it up now. And that's going to tell us if they can be the greatest team right now. Like, it's all about the change. You have to change something. And do they pick up Sven or Gyro from themselves as well? Like, that, that could be another thing for Ditya. I don't think Ditya necessarily runs Gyrocopter, but it might have to he, be on the table now. He's played it. He's a he's a much he's a much stronger Sven, in my opinion, based on what I've seen uh, than he is a Gyro. Uh, they they just then ban like Doom Gyro. And you then know what? It, to, it the thing is, we talk a lot about hero versus hero on paper, and sometimes it really is about team versus team. Uh, whatever Navi choose to do in this draft, I, I want to be, I want to see a draft where they're the ones taking the initiative. Right. I think they have a better chance when, yeah, they just don't get rolled that's over by, you know, they don't get rolled over by end here. Yeah, you know, that's my big problem with the Oracle pick. It's not that the hero, the hero has these ridiculous combo potentials. He has ridiculous utility, but he's such a passive hero early on, and that's just not how Navi play. I don't think he was that passive though. He got so many kills in the mid lane. I, I, that's why I disagree with your your point there. And then Chen is the aggressor that we talk about that goes to that top lane, helps him out. It's just they're. I, I think if they he run this, execution. yeah. I think if they run this lineup again, they'd be like, okay, or the same game again. They they won't give the free kill bottom lane. They won't give the free kill top lane. I, I think you just have to be wary when that gyrocopter is in the bottom lane. Witch Doctor will be there, and him getting caught out so early on in the game, it, it's just it hurts Navi because that's that's Navi's lineup, right? If you fall behind early, and you just let gyrocopter dictate the pace of the game, you're gonna lose. It, well, I, I mean. It's a great, that's a great analysis. I don't agree with it, but it's a great analysis. I think at this point we'd have to go back and watch the replay like two or three more times to really figure out who's right here. But I, I, can you at least agree? I, no, I think we do both agree that Navi need to be the ones forcing the issue in the early game. Yes. Too far-fetched to consider the idea that maybe they, they do not ban the Doom, but maybe pick the Doom. They're not known to run Doom a lot in the past, but you're calling out for a change here. Like I said, they could do it themselves. They can't run Doom. I, I, they just have to make one or two adjustments in the, j uh, in the draft there. You can't draft the same way for the fourth game. Or, like I talked about, you can't give away those early kills in the fourth game. So it, it's just how are they going to fix these little, little errors? I almost feel like in the last couple drafts, they've just kind of outthought themselves. They've kind of, you know, the Dendi, the last minute switch to the Dendi invoker putting the puck in the off lane, it was, it was a great concept on paper. Uh, this last draft, yeah, the, just Urkel, the Oracle Rome third, that game. The, it's a great concept on paper, but by and large, it's not what they've been doing all tournament I think long. it's execution, honestly, when I keep thinking about this now. Art style, early game, didn't have it, and well, we should go. We should go right to a game now. There we go. All right. Woo, we let's can do it. See. It's game number four. We are okay, in so they uh, get first final pick territory. now. And Dyer for VGR. What? Now they so maybe oh, Navi want to change. That's Navi, a change. Okay, I swear. <laughs> Navi picks second pick. This is what they, I think that's this is what they had to do. All right, so they're going to have to Second pick seems not terrible when you've got stuff like the Lion in play that it's like I don't want to first pick it as a solo first pick, but I can get it as a one-two no, punch kind of a thing. This has to be some kind of the, a, a scripted play, a scripted draft that they've run because overall in this patch, uh, set, uh, first pick Dyer has just crushed second pick Radiant. They're probably just going to go back for the general Batrider maybe. 
Uh, they they really don't want to give Enchantress right now or Beastmaster. This is gonna be very interesting how Navi approaches this. Do you leave them? Do you just leave Might both have on to the leave table? Both, yeah. Yeah. It's def okay. No, okay. You have to take out. So Beast. they're giving up the Enchantress. They presumably get like the Bat Rider in exchange. Although they they really haven't been uh, hugely high on that hero in the first couple drafts at least. Uh, I think if given the opportunity, Navi might just run Sven. Like. You think the first phase, Sven? Yeah, I think it counters Gyrocopter in a sense. And VG might be thinking about that now. Like, do we first pick Sven so they don't get it themselves? I I honestly think they're thinking about that right now. Or the Gyrocopter. I think you may very well be right. I, I still think it's it's hard for them to go away from first pick Enchantress. It's very hard to go away from it, but it's hard to like because say. Because you're, you're then going to... you you then They have you supports to counter the Enchantress, though. That's... That's the big thing for me. Like, support Enchantress is obnoxious as hell, hell yeah, to play if, against. But if you don't pick it here as VGR, you you're giving away Enchantress Fen. You're giving away Enchantress, a lot of things that hurt. They would be able to grab up a bounty hunter though, as well. Um, and do you think the priority of a lion? I, I mean, I don't, wouldn't imagine a first pick lion here. I wouldn't argue. I actually wouldn't argue too hard with that. Yeah, but it is it, it, you just you can't go away from the first pick inch with its. They were just thinking about it impact. so long. It's yeah, like they're going to go back to the bat rider. Yeah. Excellent. Bat, bat witch bat doctor. Witch I like doctor. this open a lot. Okay. Right. This is this again. It sets up that option for that powerful, aggressive general and art style dual lane, and I really like that. We might see something yeah. change and art style get pushed down to the bottom lane to babysit. Uh, to babysit Dit Your Eyes Hero, but I like the potential at least. Would you say this justifies why they would want to be going for the second pickup then? Like no, that's being why able I talked about the, it. I the said Navi bread and yeah, butter. I, 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 exact, I, no, I it, exactly what I just said. It earlier. was exactly his point. It's a great point. The, you pick Radiant for the Bat Rider off lane. Yeah, and the Vengeful Spirit now as the counter to the Bat Rider. This is this is pretty good drafting by both sure sides. Sure, you didn't win Oracle in the Haas? Get, get, can I? I'm tilting him. Two, I'm two tilting him. <laughs> there. Well, I mean, it's vengeful spirit, dire side, so, you know, you get that benefit as well. Working I just want him to start screaming at me. We all want to see uh, Nahaz freak the hell out. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, all get, Thanks, guys. we all get our rocks Thanks. off on that, that's for sure. Charles Barkley sucks. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. At I least he knows who Charles Barkley is. I know people out there <laughs> oh, who don't yeah. even know that. Who was that? So. Who said they didn't know? Was yeah, that Charlie? Certain, certain Gerg. What is? Oh yeah, Gergy. That was right. <laughs> yeah, Ryu, you are Charles Barkley's golf swing. Okay. Oh jeez. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Though as we go through the second phase of bands, VG Gaming Reborn rid of the bounty hunter. They also rid of the, of course, Dityara Lycanthrope. Navi will rid of, as always, the Broodmother, and they get rid of the. CYF Sven. Does so, leave out the gyrocopter still? I mean, if, if, if you're FY, are you, do you just like have your cursor over the gyro and clicking as fast as you can? Probably. If you're, if you're Navi, Navi, do you take it away? Well, no, 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 no. Ember. Ember for Navi here, for Ditya. Honestly, it's not that bad. Especially early on against the Enchantress creeps. You can you Ember know, Enchantress. here, though. Um, Maybe not right now, but I think it's in the back of their minds. I, I like it as a possibility. I, just, I like the gyro pick here as a deny. I really do. Uh, it, it's not. Then again, I don't think it fits their. Yeah, it's not. I don't, it doesn't fit Ditya. I yeah, it doesn't feel like a Ditya hero. It's not a Ditya hero. So go away, Nahas, and then watch him be right. Then watch him be right. Uh, so you are thinking. You are thinking about the Seneco hero. Uh, you had a pretty There's good performance ES on Earth Spirit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Too late to. Oh no, it was banned out. Ignore me, gentlemen. I muted you. Other and feasible you do grabs. Of, what about they get the lion themselves? You do have to watch the Ursa with Navi, but yeah, yeah the Ursa spirit I think makes the most sense it, of, it of everything we've discussed. We we just pretty much both agreed but on that I pick there. I really think Fichi just comes right back with the gyro here. I really do. At four, if not at three. It just works so well for them. Oh, Ooh. boy. Wow. Okay. I am I am okay with being wrong there just because, especially with the Venge, it just fits so well. Now Navi have to respect the threat of the push out of Vici, even if they don't choose to go hugely early. Uh, it's something that, that colors the last two picks here. You cannot pick an Invoker. You can't pick anything that comes online too late. I mean, Invoker is still not bad here, though. 
you have Forge Spirits to really soak up all the Juggernaut. I slash. think it's a huge risk if you. I, I, they may do it anyway, but I, ju I just feel like it's a huge risk. Well, Dindy, the thing that's the thing with Dindy, right? He normally doesn't play Invoker anymore. That's not saying he can't play. Yeah, it. And he would just go back with the Queen of Pain. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly. the, the Dindy's best hero. It's, I like when he's on it. All I just think time. it gives you it gives you more options against the early push than the Invoker does. It also can seems come to be uh, Mikasa's early. best hero, and I guess you do have the option of taking it away from yeah, him. That's a deny. I really love the Jug. We didn't touch about it enough with so countering the Bat Rider as well. You know, do you spin off the Napalm, and then if you get very aggressive as General, like that's the thing with General, right? He D gets these solo kills all DP the time. DP here, DP here DP? for your mid. I mean, I uh, I know. It, th on the one hand, Mikasa has gotten so heavily punished in a couple of games with this hero. On the other, it just, if you're looking to go for that early push, goodness, it's its scary. He has struggled in the 1v1 matchup against Dendi with the Death Prophet in their last series. I mean, it's not. Both games yeah. and dropped him. It's just on paper so good with the strat, but I think, I think the, the player might scare you away a little bit. Yeah, the puck. puck. Okay, that's the safer option. I actually option. had puck in my head because I was going to bring it up, and then I thought about Earth Spirit and Queen of Pain, like, if he Did face I shift once, if he face shifts wrong once, I feel uh, like he could be, will be there, yeah. Did or I not Queen say Hill puck or DP? I, I guess I yeah, did I not say puck. I think well, you harped on DP more. I, I okay. forgot if you said right. puck. I think yeah, you probably said puck before. So all right, they're gonna take out. This is a, a good band for Navi. They're gonna take out the dark seer. Take out the potential for that sort of team fight. Uh, Vici already have a bit of that, but they they would like a little bit more AOE on that side. Probably Navi here. You want to ban uh, or VG? You want to ban out Ursa? Or this is yeah, a pretty good Ursa game I've so far. I was thinking. I've been thinking that for a couple of picks now. Ursa just ruins Juggernaut. Sven also actually, but he's out. Okay, Navi ban. Yeah, Navi is like. That's that's a little bit weird. Navi banned the Sven themselves, but I guess after what ZY has done on them in this tournament. And online, too. Yeah, Ember sure. talked about that earlier, being a very call. good hero. I, I, I still like the Ursa. Why not? Why so not? So what are we left here? I think if they Vigia. Ursa, though, then maybe VG go, like, Lone Druid or something. Do you think I VG will go for Lone Druid again here? It's I think they could, yeah. I think uh, they I mean, get... Lone Druid is a Lone Druid has a lot more utility in pushing lineups than people think, be just because of the demolish. Even even before the radiance or whatever item comes online, uh, the bear does tons of damage to towers. It could be bear on bear action here, guys. Bear Ooh. force one. I'd love it. You been saving that one. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. One of them's gonna get buried. Okay. Well, let's relax <laughs> too over far, here. Too okay. far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see how it is, guys. The Ditya hero, though. Clinks is another hero that he's played well in the past. I thought about Clinks, but uh, I get, uh, it's very good at times until Juggernaut gets at level 11. And His first Omni Slash isn't going to do as much to Clinks, but I got, later on. I got Ursa, Clinks, and Gyra in that order. Gyro. Okay, Gyro. Cool. We didn't say it was much of a Ditya hero, but when the time is right, and also when you don't want... Vichy Gaming to maybe have that opportunity. I need your second support here. A lot of options. No, you're going to need off lane here. Well, off I mean, the lane. Yeah. Oh, you think they're going to? Okay, yeah, yeah. They're not going to run. What am I thinking? They're not going to run the end off lane. We're not any Dota here, boys. Uh, Tide. I mean, LGD did it, so. I, I like Lone Druid still. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's default back to that. What else, though? Uh, Tide's not. Lone Druid and Tide. Yeah. Tide are, are gets punished so hard against Gyro. That's probably the worst pick here, just because of that. I don't think he. I, I still think this is this. I still think this isn't a bad inch offlane game, but they just don't. They don't generally do that as a team. Enchant versus offlane versus Witch Doctor Gyro is horrible because of the male dick plus the Gyrocopter Rocket Barrage, and you, you have so much. Uh, oh, the you only no, reason no, no, you don't you don't solar uh, inch is inch goes in dual offlanes. You just, like over you just said NA dual. Dota. NA Dota solo offlane and champ. No, 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 no. All right. That's not that. that, that All right, Nahas. Anyway. No, Enchi's over 60% as a dual offlaner. Uh, about 40% as a solo offlaner. They're but thinking about it. Uh, if I, I feel like they're thinking if they can get away with the lone druid, <laughs> and sorry, then they right? feel like they can't. Oh, so there you go. All right. They ran it against Virtus Pro, and they'll be pulling it out again here and now. Gentlemen, based on the draft before us, how you feeling? I think Navi sends us to a game five. I think they got a lineup they're comfortable with. I just want to see a game five, so I have to pick Navi. Me too, man. The dream. 
a full five-game series for a grand final here at Starletter. We'll keep our fingers crossed if that's going to be the case or not. Let's send it over to our casters right now. It's AC and Gods. Gentlemen, take it away. Welcome back to the floor of Cyber Arena for the fourth time in this series, my friend. And not going to lie, I think I'm on the same side as our panel. I want to see a game five, and I know everyone in this house wants I'll, to see I'll take a it. game. Well, everyone except, the, <laughs> except the, you know, the, the really talented guys are sitting on the other side of the stage anyway. Well, they, they, <laughs> as they showed, there's a couple Chinese fans here in Kiev for Vici Gaming Reborn. The, 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 so. the, they literally traveled. They, they're not like well, photographers. They, they may be part of the, like, the, uh, the, the Isle, the Isle crew. Count. The, the, the entourage doesn't count. We all know that. I'm sure there's at least Terrible one. HBO series. <laughs> but anyway, we're about ready to jump on in. Game number four. Seeing if Navi can push this to its absolute limit or if Vici is going to be able to close this out. Three, two, one. Here we go. They are rocking here in Kiev. They are rooting for the hometown favorites. And the upstarts in red looking to put a silence on this crowd. So taking a look at the overall draft gods, give me your first thoughts as we see everyone move and get into position for the runes. FY Enchantress coming back. The most successful Enchantress in my mind as far as this tournament goes. Outsell a close second, but FY's rotations have been on point time and time again. It won them the series against LGD earlier today. So I think with him in the driver's seat as far as the early aggression goes, Vici Gaming going to give Na'Vi a tough time early on. So Nico and the Earth Spirit has to be on point with his rotations as well to kind of match up with FY. I kind of talked about with Nahaz, what are the key, what's like the key big general like thing to look for in this series? And it is this FY versus Nico matchup. Right. Still 10 seconds out. VG prioritizing top. They've sent four up there. The Night Stalker can only look on at bottom. We'll see who's going to grab what. And you're actually going to see General make a run at it. Why not? It will be picked up by Mikasa, and Queen of Pain will end up getting Navi's bounty rune. How about we start with there? Start with there? Great, great grammar. Start there as we run through our lineups as the lanes begin to take shape. It's going to be Dindy on one of his quintessential heroes. Tell you the truth, Dindy's one of those guys who's got about an entire... 15 long hero pool of quintessential heroes. Queen of Pain just happens to be among them. He's going mid as usual. Bisaneko back on the Earth Spirit, now roaming his way back towards bottom, at least for now. Art style, not on the Enchantress this time. Going to be playing on the Witch Doctor, helping out in this bottom lane. Speaking of, we're going to have another Gyrocopter, four games in a row. This time, though, it's wearing the black and yellow as opposed to the red and white. It's going to be far by Ditch Huron, as we saw General out in the off lane on the bat for VGR. Going to be another Enchantress. This time it's FY. He's going to work in the jungle. Going to be DDC playing on the Venge. And not flying around this time, just skating around on the Juggernaut, farming out in the safe lane. Puck going to be played by the MVP of last game. I don't think there's a whole lot of question to it. Mikasa going up against Dendi here in mid. And, of course, Yang out in the off lane on the Night Stalker. Well, early on, Night Stalker going for the Iron Talon jungle. Will have his camp blocked out now, so... May have to beg his supports for some sentries to resume farming that camp, but all in all, big picture wise, VGR have the level two coming on Yang, the lane pushing out a little bit, but that, that's going to be controlled by Art Style now as he already goes for the double pull in the Radiant safe lane. So we'll see what General, as the counterpart, can get done up top. He's popping a Firefly, trading hits a bit here, but this is very defensive play from General. He's really struggling to get any XP out of this lane. Yeah, I mean, General's kind of, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, tell me how you see it. Seems like he's been a little hit and miss this series, unfortunately. And, you know, he's an excellent player. We, uh, I think the panel really highlighted his strength, which is solo kills and shining in those moments. But he has had some trouble here and there and really, you know, just small little lapses in decision making and team fights that have ultimately cost his team from time to time. And uh, he's going to need a good start. He's going to be relied upon heavily. And we're actually going to see DDC deny uh, the rune there. Mikasa. <laughs> Probably would have liked it, but all in all, he's okay. He's still got plenty of region. Yeah. So triple stack already created by Batrider. That's something which Enchantress could theoretically get in and contest or even take for herself. You go in there, you grab one of the creeps, you can farm it. Unfortunately, no Wild Wing. Uh, well, he finds a Wild Wing elsewhere. So if he catches wind of this stack, he'd, uh, that's easily justifiable to go in there to steal it. Ooh, Mikasa just yep. jumped forward. Oh, that's a big trouble. mistake he made. And Face that's shift. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. And now Dindy goes back in. Still not enough. One more auto attack in, though. Mikasa showing off his chops, but Dindy has some chops, too. 
First blood goes to the hometown heroes. Very close to turning around. Earth Spirit, one more tower hit would have been enough to bring him down, but Mikasa pushing the hero a bit beyond its limits. And yep. It was a bad jaunt, bad jaunt forward. Yeah. We've seen this before. This is not too much of a concern for VGI. Every single game, that's the thing, as much <laughs> you can talk about Mikasa being like maybe a weak link on this VGI team, he's always being dual lane. Like, yep. It's never a 1v1 matchup against Dendi, against Miracle, against whoever he's been up against in the mid lane. Everyone is just 2v1-ing him. It's just not like a fair fight. One, if anything, and more importantly, he has bounced back like a champ yep. every single time, even in the loss. So Vici now moving with two under cover of smoke. They want to make a run at this bottom lane. Now would be the time. Level three for the Night Stalker. Did your raw and art style. Art style is just level two. Only one point in the cask. Let's see if they can make it happen. Yang, yep, he baits it out. He's getting a lot of damage in the meantime. That Rocket Barrage going to work, but there's the follow-up. Yang's going to make it away safely. They heal from the Witch Doctor not enough as he has to abandon ship. And now they're going to turn on Artstyle anyway. What was he doing? He turned and left and got out of healing range, I thought, to save himself. Instead, he hangs around just close enough to make it 2-1. to one. Yang and FY are uh, just so good at those plays where Yang baits and then FY just comes in for the gank. We saw it in the Brood game where the Enchantress come to the lane, Brood baits them to go on him, and then FY shows up to turn it around and get a couple of kills. This is something which you just don't see enough from these like offlane support duos, and there's so many opportunities you can play around with it. And VGR, the best team I've seen at doing it currently. So really nice little bit of play there. Very, and, and the most important thing about baiting, baiting it there is getting the cask on cooldown, because it's the Witch Doctor cask which counters the Enchantress rotation by taking those neutral creeps out of the picture. And it's just, the cask gets used, they come in, easy free two kills. Well, the second, maybe not a free kill, the second Art Cell gives them a little bit, but great early game start here for Vici Gaming Reborn after that rotation. No, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of their mechanical Ooh. execution of those style of gangs. Another smoke coming from Yang. The offlaner saying, it's nighttime, let's get active. He One wants point to go on Dendi. Fear. Yep, he's, yep. Got the, he's got the silence, all he needs. Dendi is going to be at full health, though. This is going to have to be extremely well executed. He's going to go. Don't know that anyone else is coming. There's the void. Mikasa is going to go for it. They're going in, and they get him from distance oh. using the Seder Tormentor, and Seneco came in. Day late and a dollar short, and give that buck to VGR as they once again pile up another, another double kill at this time here in mid. Sonico just a tiny bit too far away to get there in time to save him. If he hits that boulder smash a second earlier, I believe Dendi would survive with a blink escape. But as it stands, VGR, early game aggression, the name of the game, first the Enchantress, now we've got the Night Stalker involved, and now End on the Jug is looking to pressure that top T1 tower on top of that. Now we have a lot of problems to solve, and they have very few answers so far. I, I, I'm looking around just trying to figure it out. I don't know what they could have done differently. I mean, they dual lane mid, they made a good run, they got the first blood on Mikasa, then it was just a really well executed gank, and then there, Seneco just a, a half a breath behind where he needed to be, and it cost them big. And they are pushing top, and they're gonna get this tier one. Already the glyph has been blown, so it's not even gonna be contested. But take a look at General. He is doing well for himself. He's at level five and a half. He did manage to take that camp uncontested over near the side lane. And, I mean, there are some bright spots here, but, I mean, this is just a big hole to find yourself in if you're Na'Vi this early into a game. Absolutely. And giving up a tower at this stage as well as giving up a lot of space and map control to VGR. This first nighttime has been a huge success for them. Yang, level 5, almost seeing level 6. Going to spend some time in the jungle. You get a couple of successful ganks, and you know your opponents are going to play a bit more conservative. So this is still time spent off the map. So if you're Na'Vi, you're still scared. You're looking around yeah. like, where's this Night Soaker? Is he ganking right now? And it's really nice kind of as a Night Stalker, not just to exclusively gank or exclusively farm. You want to kind of mix it up, keep your opponents off their guard. He's getting close to his phase boots, if that's indeed the choice. And I, I, I'm really impressed with the way... It, it's just one of those things. The game plan is, was very clear for VGR. Mikasa in mid is getting bullied around, but, you know, after last game, I'm not going to say a, a word about it until I see what, what starts happening around 12 to 15 minutes. And... I mean, this bat, I, I feel like so much of what Navi's going to want to accomplish is so reliant on the bat. I mean, yes, the I mean, the gyro is doing just fine. He's level 7, he's got his Aquila up, he's got his phase boots up, he's sitting at 50 CS, which is 
second on the board. Problem is, it's not just a second, it's a far second. He's end. doing fine in the sense he's farming, but he's not doing fine in the sense like a gyrocopter, you want it by eight minutes in, you want to have seen gyrocopter involved in either a kill in his safe lane or yeah. a rotation to find kills elsewhere. So as far as like what the pick's impact on this game has been, it, has been, it needs to start doing more. Dichira has to be the one to start getting involved and fighting with his team. I think that's going to be end. End is level eight. As FaZe Perseverance is ready to maybe take some time away from farm, move around, trying to make something happen. He's going for a very greedy farming build. Stats heavy, only two points in Blade Fury, rushing a Battle Fury, not going for a Drums, no Aquila even, no Magic Wand. With that said, you can go for this greedy farming build and still fight because of just how strong Omni Slash is. You get a pick with Omni Slash, then you fall back and farm. Dendi could be in some trouble here. Dendi picks up his treads. DDC looking for oh, him. Oh, Korea scouted them. Yep. And he's going to immediately blink away. That would have been beautiful. As it stands, though, Dendi able to make it away in time. Uh-oh. General's going to be spotted. Here's going to be the gyrocopter Illusion. call down. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. And they'll get DDC, I believe. But just to support Venge, and that was a full commitment to Na'Vi in the mid lane and a very low priority pickup for them. Made space for FY to catch up. He's up to level 7, has a bracer, has his yep. phase. That's just not a pickup that really does much for Na'Vi. They're not going to get a tower to follow it up. They, 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 need, they need to be able to kind of transition to getting objectives or like a big team fight follow up. Yep. We'll keep an eye and see how they want to reset. Next night still a ways off. If you're, v, if you're Vici, do you take your lead as it stands right now? and just try to build on it? Or do you try to push it even further, even if it involves risking the lead in entirely? It's daytime for now. Uh, likely we see them in about two and a half minutes when it becomes nighttime, go for a, another smoke or look to put some more pressure onto Na'Vi. They've got all their ultimates available. Even with this farming build on the Juggernaut, they can involve him if they want to, at least make sure he's ready for a TP rotation should a big fight break out. And they don't need to farm. They're missing some core items, like Puck's still a ways off the Blink Dagger, but they're going to get that Blink Dagger at a good time by fighting and ganking more so than they are by just trying to spread their heroes around the map. Giving Na'Vi pickoffs is probably the worst thing you can do right now. So go, if you're VGR, VGR, go in the aggressive as soon as it's night. I want you to look at their positioning as of right now. They did manage to find DDC. I um, was just going to say, I was watching. It looked like they wanted to gank FY really, really badly, but he just pulled back in time and the positioning of VGR indicated they knew something was up. They knew that Navi wasn't showing enough heroes, something was going on. Unfortunately, DDC still found in a bad position. So good kill for Navi and they got to keep it rolling though. I feel like they need to get Dindy mm. very active. Absolutely. Navi going to try and pressure this bottom tier one tower with the Observer Orb. That's likely going to get dewatered. The Sentry expiring soon, but they dewatered a fresh Observer from that Navi's planted and this could transition into VGR defending this bottom lane. They do have Darkness available if they want to TP in heroes to fight this one, but only two here already in position. FY at level 8 with the Impetus. Watched him throw one spear at Art Style and take his health down at least two fifths. Mid lane so, oh, Lasso. Yep, Lasso on the Mikasa. Okay. That's Big the kill. Blink reveal. Yeah. I, I, blink Dagger comes up on General Navi finding their footing. As this is going to be kind of the key to Navi's turnaround in this game is to just keep finding pickoffs using this Batrider and VGR are going to be looking to counterplay it. They are going to be able to transition into the Aghanims for Nightstalker, a great tool to have against that Batrider since you can always see him coming in when it's nighttime, but it's going to be this period of the game Ooh. where they need to be careful not to give up too many kills to Bat. Raw's in a big, big hole here. Jugger's going to rush out and Omni Slash, little Blade Fury action, easy kill. He just, you can't say he overextended, but at the same time it's night, fear's popped. I mean, you have to, I don't know, I can't say you have to. I mean, when darkness is up like that, he, even where he was killed, isn't that a bit too far? Now art style, look at that, there's that impetus damage I was talking about. Took two, every bit of two impetus spears yeah. from FY to bring him down. Yeah, with, with the gyrocopt, it's absolutely too far. For him, it's a calculated risk where he kind of measures like, okay, how likely am I to die here versus how important is me getting a bit more farm? And given Navi kind of playing a bit from behind, he kind of decides it's worth, worth the risk, but he gets punished. I want to point out Juggernaut now sitting at 1 0 0, 103 CS at 12 and a half minutes in. And hold that thought as we're going to see another engagement. Mikasa phase shifts, gets off the waiting rift and a three man coil. No one's coming. Now they're going to be getting there, but it's going to be a little late. And FY comes in and um, yeah, 
thought he was going to cancel that. Magnetizes there, Sonic Wave cleans him up. And Dindy. Why? Bit too greedy with that TP follow up. Yeah. I, if he'd I, done it right as the puck got ganked, so he could actually, like, they, they, they're focusing on the puck, then maybe he gets away with it, but right. no, that was a bit bit unnecessary of him. I'll tell you who I would have loved to have seen come in there would have been end. His TP was off cooldown. He didn't have the Omni Slash, though, so. Fair enough. Yeah, with, with he, he can't actually fight with this Battle Fury. It's entirely playing around the Omni Slash. Bottom lane, though, they've found a pickoff on Outsala. One man smoke from Yang, that was. Night Stalker says, thanks for the kill. I'm getting closer and closer to the Myag Scepter. He hung around quite a ways there. There's going to be the swap out from DDC. And are they going to engage? They are. They want to go back in now that Mikasa is there. Did spin the coil. Wishes he had it now, I'm sure. Yang being tracked down by General. And they will be able to bring him down. Next is going to be Mikasa. He's going to be silenced out. And Navi. Finding two kills in exchange for the 1-5 position kill they gave up. This game's beginning to look a lot better for them. In fact, they've more than cut the lead that VGR had built to this point in half. Yeah, it's huge, the kills they're getting. The puck blink timing is going to be really late this game. And as farmed as the jug is, that's great news. The farm distribution is just not where you want to be. It's not that Enz taking farm away from his teammates. It's that his teammates are getting picked off, Can't giving Navi gold. Dead. Yep. Puck, 800 gold is not going to cut it right now. That blink should be coming around the 16 to 18 minute mark, despite the lane he had. But a couple deaths in a row, and Mikasa is going to be in a tough spot now. As Vichy are going to be, they're very reliant on his blink dagger for the initiation. He is the initiator come mid game time. So all of Vichy's timings do get delayed a little bit because of this. Like you said, the juggernaut, I mean, he's gone with this farming build. You know, the, the, I guess whenever you have an enchantress, you have a Vinge for the aura, you have. A Puck who's going to give you great long range behind tower initiation and, you, you know, the Enchantress and her creeps. You have the option, of course, of just marching down the lane and making them fight you. But like you said, with, with the Puck being less than optimal. Oh, wow, Dindy unable to make it away. Uh, they're, they're not going to chase him. I'm a little surprised. They had crippling fear, but I guess not wanting to take the chance. Now in mid, they're going to engage and they get the lasso and a kill once again on to Mikasa. Ooh. So this poor Puck is just getting poorer and poorer. Yeah, it's, it's getting tough. With Dendi there, he has the Yule. So if you Crippling Fear him, he, he self yules and then he blinks away. That's the, the play there for Night Stalker was the right one, which is you just go in, you nuke him, and see how he uses his spells, how where he blinks. Another kill at bottom as FY is caught out. Navi's pick movement. Pickoff after pickoff. Their and movement yes. is just carving this map up, man. Just it, amazing. Yeah, just pristine rotations coming out, finding the pickoffs. And... BGR have a good lineup to kind of counter initiate. If they can get the TP rotations, the puck can be there. But once you get that one pick off, it's just snowballing. It's this domino effect where one pick off means the puck's dead, which means he's not there to counter play it. So Navi are like, okay, puck's gone. Let's get another kill somewhere else. And Batrider General has been kind of the leading force of finding these kills. He's four zero and three. Yep. Finds a pick off on Puck, and that just opens up the bottom lane, as said. So VGR, I think, sick of getting initiated on, are going to be the ones to be the aggressors for once. Sadly, it's not super transparent that you're, or not super secretive that you're doing something whenever you pop Ooh. darkness and suddenly everyone's missing from the map. They're gonna, I like what they're doing here, though. They're trying to be a little tricky. Go to work on the road champ. Let's see how quickly Navi can realize it and if they want to challenge it. Yeah. They're all pulled back as of right now. It looks like they're going to get this for free, man. If Navi had their, if they were hovered over the pit, they would have seen the Howl of Terror with the Observer Ward, but you had to have like your, your camera over it, which it doesn't look like was the case. And also, Navi, four heroes in their own base. They smoke up now, but all too late. Even with an Aegis, Navi, they've got a lot of momentum going their way. They've got a full stuff now in general. They can still fight into Vichy. Ah. Level two Omni Slash, though. This is yes. where the, the jug really begins That's, to feel. Yeah, powerful. something Rio Boy has mentioned on the panel is just when this comes online, it gets a lot harder. Gyrocopter doesn't match up great against the Omni Slash. He's, if ever isolated, we'll just go down to that level 2 Omni. Oh, Mikasa. Oh, no. This boy just stacking Seen this camps. one before. Oh, nope. He's actually pulling back. It looks like Beachy having the senses tingle. That yep. they, scout, they scout Navi out with the Puck Orb. Oh, nice. Let's see what they want to do. It looks like for now, I thought they were going to give the old end around, but instead just going to work on the Ancients. I mean, at this point, don't you just really want to fight? Like, make them blow their abilities, put the jug out front, let him do do his job? It's daytime, and ah. darkness on cooldown, so very much a nighttime-oriented lineup. Just deny Navi's vision, make it a lot easier for N to get in close with that Omni Slash. 
Otherwise, he's potentially just like walking into a lasso. Batrider already has bad vision. If you can take further exploit that with Darkness, it gets really hard for Batrider to find those blink lasso initiations in a fight, which he'd love to get on end. But the Venge pick is there to protect the Juggernaut. This Venge swap is going to be instrumental in these fights. Oh. General's going to show himself, going to try to catch someone lagging behind. He is going to go ahead. DDC oh. preemptively swaps. And now, General's going to be brought down for free. They're fighting uphill. FY eating a lot of death ward damage. He will end up dropping. And now End is next on the list. He has nothing to get him out of trouble. All he can do is turn and go to work. But my goodness, doing a ton of damage before he dies at the very least. Aegis is coming back up. And that was a... Very good Sonic Wave. Here we go in. Now back up on Artstyle. Artstyle's going to end up dropping. Mikasa giving chase to Dindy. Missed him with the Waning Rift. He blinked and broke the uh, broke the uh, the coil. Oh, Dindy's not done. Oh, double kill for Dindymon. What a time to have an Arcane Rune. <laughs> oh, I Dendy know. Dindy just blink after blink. He's just pushing his hero to the limit. Blinking in these perfect spots to just maximize his damage output without putting himself in a position where he can go down. Gets away from the Puck waiting rift just in time. If he doesn't have that Arcane Rune, he actually dies there to the Puck silence. Oh, it's, it was so close, man. Oh. It, it could not have been more than a few frames. And a great Sonic Wave, too. He blinks out of trouble from... He does this short-range blink, but it's just to reposition to get the perfect Sonic Wave off while getting himself away from the Juggernaut. And Na'Vi got a great trade there. The Jug still surviving through it all with the Aegis. And oh, Lasso mid. They've caught out another. It's, it's Mikasa. Mikasa and is just having a rough well, one, man. Okay, he bought his plane. That's, I guess, the, the small good news. Also worth mentioning, Juggernaut did not make it out with his Aegis. No. He, uh, the Aegis yeah, had to, yeah, had to use that oh, the last okay. I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. I thought you... Anyway, Yang, Yang caught out. There's going to be the swap from DDC. Yang. They've both been magnetized. And there's another Death Ward from Artstyle. In, doesn't have Omni Slash, wants to do something, but he's just taking too much damage. Now the Enchantress comes into play as she is pecking away and forcing them back. Got the kill on Seneko. Really good healing ward positioning there from End, helping sustain him, him and his whole team there. And Na'Vi, without Lasso, they weren't really able to fight the Jug despite him not having Omni Slash. They just kind of lacked that necessary lockdown and control. Yep. Well, we're at 20 minutes in, my friend, taking a look at the gold. It's very close to even. About 2,000 to the advantage of Vici still yet. That's oh, going to be a, a big one. To get for a Dendi's great play in the last Ooh. fight, that was a big misstep from him. And I didn't even see who got that kill. Is that, oh, it was the Juggernaut Jug. 2 yeah. for 427. Really hard from there. He, he can use Disjoint the Venge stun, but if he does that, then the, the Night Stalker or the Puck is waiting for him with a silence for when he lands. So they, once he goes for that rune, he's just gotten too greedy and he... He pays for it. That's the Ags up on the Night Stalker too. Suddenly the That's advantage huge. of General yeah. is negated. So Navi had been the ones like kind of dictating the last couple of fights, but that's going to be changing quickly. Navi are going to become very smoke reliant to be able to get a good initiation off with the Batrider. And even with the Batrider, when VGR are five manning, the Venge Swap is always going to be the tool there to try and counter what Navi are looking to do with the initiating Batrider. And DiGiara just doesn't have the best farm right now. He's seeing about five... Over 5,000 net worth behind Juggernaut. Doesn't have any good way to accelerate his farm. Didn't go for the Helm of the Dominator build or anything like that. He's just got to fight his way back into this game through teamfight involvement. I'm, uh, I'm looking at Yang. I'm trying to think, okay, he's got his Scepter. We knew that was the big pickup. What's the next item for him? Because I feel like... Uh, the Jug right now, and you know, they've got, they have a lot of single target damage for the most part. The Battle Fury helps that to a certain extent. But I definitely feel like they're going to need some damage out yep. of the Night Stalker. First step is probably get the gem. Uh, your support okay. Venge doesn't want to buy it for you because DDC is very close to mech. Probably wants to turn his Arcane Boots into an Aether Lens. So probably get a gem and then Vlad's is really nice. Uh, just a very cost effective Night Stalker item. Up, uh, Yang. He had to have gotten spotted there. Nope. Not Darkness. Not. Your yep. vision with exactly. Darkness is like... <laughs> Look how much Gen General sees like this, like 600 range around him or something with darkness on. Like you, you can't see anything. These wards see nothing. Yep. That's why it's always very misleading. Like when you're casting a Night Stalker game, like yep. oh, why, why didn't they they go in there or like why, why did such and such happen? It's just denied vision. Even when heroes are what seems to be very close to each other. BKB is now up on the jug as well. That's pretty huge. His ability to now just stand and deal damage in these fights. Probably his big concern. It's going to be in part art style. Just heard a swap. And they, yep, they swapped out General, and he's down for free. And that's the one time you can use the swap to initiate, when it's on the Batrider, because it means you don't need to have the swap anymore if you're killing him yeah. off to start the fight. 
Puck actually whiffed on a coil. I thought I heard the sound effect. So throwing uh, it to try to secure more. the kill, it's, it hurts them to not have it if they wanted to push. But for the most part, it, you know, has this not just been the story, by the way, of pretty much this entire series? Navi comes out, guns blazing. We go back and forth, back and forth. It's heavy action. Then somehow we find ourselves at 20 to 25 minutes. And you start looking at gold graphs, and you start looking at items, and you start thinking about development. And you arrive at the same conclusion, which is VGR is ahead. And unless Navi does something pretty fast and something pretty intrusive, something pretty impactful, they're going to stay ahead. Yeah, and it's they've got OK late game heroes, but they're not farming towards the late game. It's Jug who is out farming them handily with the Battle Fury build. It's VGR who have the Dire Side Roche advantage to keep taking Roche, getting Aegis's far more of the map. So you're not going to catch up and compete in the late game just because of your lack of farm. So the approach very much has to be to fight into VGR, which is so difficult to do during nighttime. I imagine as soon as it hits daytime, it's smoke time for Na'Vi. Really, to me, that's probably the best play they've got right now. And the problem is going to be there is still darkness available. So Yang can pop that and negate some of that daytime period. Scepter now done on Dindy. Very good to have. Needs the damage, needs the ability to fight on and off. There's the day. Let's see. Also, also don't, there's actually no smokes available for Na'Vi. That's the bigger issue right now. If they had a smoke, this is the time to use it. But Na'Vi are going to find themselves in a bit of a pickle. VGR get a free pass this entire daytime. Okay, there's uh, uh, well, no, that's one smoke on VGR. And uh, on the Radiant side, yeah, no smoke for four and a half minutes. So by then, it's darkness again. So... Smoking into Night Stalker Darkness is just impossible. He, your smoke pops, you don't see them, Night Stalker sees you. I want to point out, I circled it on the map there, the wards. Basically, if Navi is moving anywhere near their side of the jungle, they're yep. probably being spotted. So not only does VGR have a huge, and here we go again, I'm like just smoking up down mid, doing so fearlessly, having a, a gauge on where at least three to four of the five heroes on Navi are, and they may get dendy. Dendy. Swap into stun, general, silence, something. General. Oh, There's going to be the swap. Oh, they Ooh. mistimed it. What a blink. Uh, they are going to get art style. Here we go. Going to try to bring it back in. There's going to be the call down and the sonic wave. Na'Vi is not a team to make mistakes against. Now they're going to try to turn it around with Jug's BKB. FY is doing so much damage. How? It looked like Na'Vi it was just ready to wipe Vici out of the jungle and, and stabilize this game. And Until so, Jug kicked in. Yeah, and the <laughs> Jug's like, like, LOL, uh, magic immune. Yeah, uh, he had something to say about it. Didn't even get full duration. He only slashed during the BKB, so a lot of the duration was even kind of wasted yep. to some extent. But Na'Vi use their big combo. They take out the squishier, uh, well, the squishiest Venge and the, the Night Stalker, but then they don't have any tools to deal with the Jug. Enchantress does a huge amount of DPS as well. Yeah. So there's too many threats on the VGR side. Even a perfect team fight for Na'Vi where Outside of maybe the Death Ward getting cancelled early on, Earthsprit got all his spells off, got off a good Magnetize. Batrider avoided the initiation with the swap. Swap was wasted, but Na'Vi still can't come out on top just by sheer lack of farm and the just general farm discrepancy between the two carries, the Jug and the Gyrocopter. I love this pickup from the Jug, by the way. Grabs his Blink Dagger. I love... Like, I mean, it might be a bit overkill if he went Scepter. I mean, he's gone with this farming build, and he certainly got the option open. But just the ability to get into these fights, now that BKB should be should be feeling more useful because now you can blink, you can Omni, and save your BKB for the end instead of having to feel like you need to BKB, then run in, then Omni, then use your Blade Fury. Now you can save it all for after the Omni Slash. Yeah. And something you mentioned, the Observe Wards again kicking in. This one deep one in the bottom Radiant Jungle has been completely... Gone on and gone on notice. And Navi need to even consider getting a gem on Batrider. I, I, I feel at some point just because of how much information Vici are constantly have of their whereabouts. And Vici, it looks like they want to wait out for the next. Nope, never mind. I was gonna say maybe hang and wait for the next night. They want to go right now. Navi's like, yeah, we're we're getting out of this one. And this is a long nighttime now. The darkness will last long enough that it will be nighttime when it ends. And Navi has got to spend the next five minutes very much afraid. That kick. Not bad, not bad. Flame break. And, I mean, this this should just, the, the way this just looked, I mean, basically Vici just popped darkness, ran directly to Navi, and Navi could do nothing but turn and run, run until they couldn't see Vici. Anymore, and Navi basically. know full well that this Roche is going on, but they have no smoke to contest it with. They just don't, even with a smoke, 
contesting this is probably impossible, so they're just going to have to accept the fact they're giving up an Aegis and putting themselves in a very difficult position here in game number four, a must-win game in this Grand Finals. Jog is critting so hard, by the way, man. He's hitting for, we just saw him crit the creep, or crit Roshan, excuse me. For 500, right there's a 742. To put that in perspective, that's about 150 to 200 points more damage than Sonic Wave. So not only does he have it, he also has it in an AoE. And I, oh, you walk me through it. What's Navi's way of winning fights from this point forward? They need to get a clean initiation with Batrider. Somehow get a jump and catch VGR so much by surprise that Venge isn't able to get off the swap in time. They need to fight and use daytime as effectively as possible. Save your smokes for daytime. And this next day has to be the time for the Na'Vi comeback. The problem is there's now an Aegis. Last day, 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 daytime, they had no smokes. This daytime, there's going to be an Aegis on, Na, on uh, VGR. So it's incredibly difficult for them. Short term, they want to split push, avoid fight. So they're going to have Dendi up in the top lane, just pushing out, pressuring the tower, basically threatening VGR. Like, okay, it's basically telling VGR, if you guys want to go for a push for our high ground bottom, we're going to at least have some presence at top that chips away at your tier threes, maybe even threatens to rax you in exchange. But right now, VGR is just pushing way faster, and that ultimately means Navi are going to have to defend. Let's see if they've got it in them. Bat's ready to go. Doesn't have Firefly, though. Yeah, he blinks it and he missed. He missed! Oh, General! They're going to come in off the back of it, but End is just going to work. Sineko can't do anything. There's going to be a good Sonic Wave, but Dindy now has it down for 30 seconds, and End about to come back up. They're going to go to work. End, there's the lasso swap from DDC to keep him alive. There was a buyback from Artstyle to try to continue to hold this high ground. Dindy will come out. They will secure the kill on the Venge. And now Dindy is, is very tanked up, actually. There's a cast that's going to get it bounced and hit all three. FY left behind. He's going to end up dead to Dit Yura. And now it's going to come back in with the Omni Slash. Art Style ends up dead as well. It's three for two with a buyback on the side. There's a Sonic Wave. Got him again. Did your raw slow, but he's going to re engage. And it's going to end up dead. That's a full five man wipe as Navi not only shows signs of life, but tears their way out of the grave that seemed to have already been dug. A lot, and, of, a lot of things is going so well there for Na'Vi. The Sonic Wave Arcane Rune cooldown, 28 second oh cooldown man. on a 555 pure damage AoE nuke. That is insane. The end, the Omni Slash as well, didn't bounce to the Gyrocopter. Nope. It went to the Witch Doctor. That was perfect for <laughs> the Na'Vi. The Witch Doctor cask that at max range yes. RNG'd itself to hit so all So many three. small things went Navi's way, and it turns into a big team wipe. They're not done. They'll get DDC oh, as well. DDC down. And the last thing, it looked like General messed up the initiation, but part of me wants to say he may have been doing it on purpose. You if he so? blinks in, baits out the swap, it didn't end up working, but if he baits out the swap, he then has buyback. He wasn't trying to lasso. He was just trying to force out some spells, buy back, and then have Lasso available with Swap on cooldown. Unfortunately, he dies without Swap being used, but he still forces a fight to follow it up. He's going to force oh, another one. Oh, fly caught. This is another easy kill. Vici are coming apart at the seams. The, the, the meticulous approach they've taken the team fights pretty much throughout the entire series is just falling apart. They're rushing in too close, one at a time, and being picked off one at a time. Na'Vi has taken command of this, of, of the room for sure, but the lead that Vici had worked so hard to build right at about 10,000 gold is now cut in half or more, and Na'Vi right back in this, my friend. Yeah, Vici, I just need to slow things down, go back to the basics, what got them this lead, which was using the map control, the vision that the Night Stalker Axe gave them, letting Na'Vi try and make plays to come to them because they can always just counter-initiate so well. The Juggernaut has BKB. He's going to be building towards a Lincoln Sphere now as well. They don't need to rush things to go for that push. They were out-farming the Gyrocopter by such a big margin that their late game was just going to be far superior. But after a fight like that, Dicha Ra suddenly is neck and neck with, oh, kind of neck and neck with Jug. He's still a good portion behind, but he completes a butterfly. He's suddenly looking like a late game gyro. Earlier yeah. it was like, oh, he's got BKB. That's it. Yasha <laughs> right. BKB. Jug, meanwhile, has like three, four items. But the, the goal difference between the two heroes has shrunk as we reach the 32 minute mark now. Something, you know, when it comes back to it again, we can see they attempted to do the Ancients at one point or another and abandoned it. He's going to go up there now. Haven't been seeing a ton of stacking. That's okay. 
Manta style should be either done or very close yes. to done off of he's this. He's got the money for it, yeah, so he'll fight it out. And this will help him a ton against the, the Juggernaut Omni Slash. Just spread that damage around to the Illusions. He's got very high armor as well at this point with the Agi from the Butterfly as well as the Manta style coming out. So Juggernaut going to be somewhat dealt with by the itemization of DJR, but if he's ever kind of caught alone in that Omni Slash, it's still a very big problem for him. Well, the Jug at some point, I mean, he's he's full up right now. Um, assuming the ultimate orb, what do you think, Scott or your man? Link, Lincoln's here. Lincoln's, okay. Yeah. He wants Lincoln's just for the lasso. That's an excellent call, you're right. All right, there's actually a chance at Scotty too. Uh, that, 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 that being said, there is a chance at Scotty. I'm not 100% sold on the Lincolns, but I, th I think it's very good this well, game. Well, I'm sold on the Lincolns, so you yeah, shut all up. All right, we're going Lincolns. <laughs> Somebody should tell him that's what he's building, in case he doesn't know. Anyway. Look, you stay here, AC. I'll be right back. Give me about a minute and a half. I actually also got to look up the phrase in Chinese, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Navi trying to make something happen. It's going to be a two-man coil. Called out is there. And gets the Omni Slash off, and down goes Art Style. Down goes General. A double kill for N. Dit Yura. On his monster kill streak, will he be able to do it? Yes! They will be able to chase him to the high ground. No, he's going to blink. Oh, oh, oh no. my goodness. Disaster. Oh, and. Dendi, <laughs> don't, he's not going for it. I, I just about oh. would have had to. I, I, he, he juked so hard, he faked the caster out. I like literally was like, okay, he's definitely dead. Go ahead and complete the phrase so you're not just sitting there going, uh, waiting on the on the big mm. follow through. You can see VGR, once that Omni Slash has been used, the follow-up fight is not the easiest thing in the world. They've got this offlane Night Stalker, which is very much that utility hero, yep. but it's all juggernaut as far as the Omni Slash damage goes, as well as a little bit of the Enchantress, but the two cores in Night Stalker and Puck are very much team fight controllers. They're not dishing out huge amounts of damage, and that's a bit of a concern. It's also why we see Puck going for that Dagon build to just provide that bit of, bit of extra firepower so they're not entirely reliant on the Juggernaut. But still very much concerning for VGR that these fights are not going as well as they'd like them to. And well, N didn't get the memo, unfortunately. He went for a Scotty AC. Yeah. <laughs> see, dude, uh. it's because you don't know Chinese. I blame yep. you. It's your fault. Give uh, another year or two, I'll get there. <laughs> you learn Chinese, I learn Russian, and we'll be unstoppable. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, another example of, of, and you know, we've seen it all series, of Navi looks to be in a phenomenal position. They get good initiation, and then suddenly it's kind of even, and then suddenly it's kind of not. Suddenly you just look, you're like, Vici kind of maybe won that one. And... Now the gym picked up. Very small win, though. Like, for yeah, Na'Vi, they don't lose any important heroes. Both Queen of Pain and Gyrocopter surviving the fight. Uh, for VGR, the Jug survives, but he didn't really get any key kills for them. So, slightly neutral exchange. And they do lose the gem. I believe this is a newly purchased gem on the VGR side, whereas Na'Vi got a gem. Yeah, General carrying a gem now, which was the Night Stalk. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the Yang's old gem. So, they get a free gem on Bat right out of it, which is pretty handy. Now they're going around and de-warding now. Daytime strikes. Still looks like no smoke on the Navi side for five minutes. It will be Roche in a minute's time too, so no Navi smoke to contest Roche with, which means that's going to be a bit of a challenge as far as how this game is going to, tr going to flow from here. Yeah, it looks like Beachy happy to just farm up, take away the Radiant Jungle when they can. Maybe they'll go fight, though. I mean, they're heading back to their side. Looks like they really are prioritizing just staying safe, staying grouped up. Darkness will be used. And Navi just hoping they don't get caught out of position. That could happen. Here we go. They're going to move to the north. Navi sitting just beside them and shows himself. BKB now done on the Night Stalker. And with him now being magic immune, his ability to get off the crippling fear is going to be a huge factor, especially against heroes like the Queen of Pain and the Bad Rider and the Earth Spirit. VGR smoke up as they also immediately de ward. I believe they smoked under that ward, so Navi should know this is coming. They're blinking away, although that blink was scattered. Yang in hot pursuit, the four staff TP will make it away before Yang gets close enough for the void. And Dendi also TPing out just in time, so. Roche has respond as well. So VG maybe taking a look in that direction. Certainly Navi is going to be conscious of it. Yeah, for Navi, it may just be something they have to give up at some point because of their lack of smoke and just general lack of map vision when you've got an Ag's Night Stalker on the other team. But 
They're in position with lanes pushed out such that they can at least posture around this Roshan pit for now. It's more a matter of once that like, these other lanes get pushed out, can Na'Vi continue to contest that Roche area on the map? I mean, looking at what Na'Vi can bring to bear, I feel like the Roche area is actually pretty advantageous for them to fight in. Yeah, you've got a bat. Well, it's normally great with a bat rider. The Venge does somewhat deal with that. And also just the, the vision is such is going to be an ongoing problem for them. I keep forgetting. It's uh, not everybody has the god vision we do. Yes. <laughs> it's Na'Vi playing with a very dark, scary map right now. They've got the one observer around the mid lane, but even that really reveals nothing to them. I mean, that said, though, they do have the Earth Spirit, AoE, Monster, Queen of Pain, of course, yep. for damage, call down. Helm of the Dominator, that's the vision tool. That's the summon which they can send around <laughs> and actually, well, it's it scouts enchanted. out Rose, then gets stolen, yeah. Up here we go. Matt trying to go in, didn't get anyone. At least he didn't I waste it. If it, he had wasted it and gotten swapped yes. and then they hadn't engaged, it would have been much worse. It almost feels like, again, that's slightly the game plan for General, possibly just trying to blink in and see how VGR respond, whether they're going to use that swap. And then when swaps on cooldown, he has a free lasso. There's a stone. They got to go soon. Nope, they're and just going to give it up. Too hard. No vision. You're exposing yourself in the river and the low ground if you do. And Aegis as well as Cheese go the way of VGR. Cheese on the Night, Night Stalker. Stalker. Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, oh. They, they find him. There's going to be the Omni Slash on Ditchy Rod. There's going to be the Manta style. And they've, oh, they've got him so low already. General's going to go ahead and get that off. There's the immediate swamp and a huge coil. What a play. Art style locked down with the rest of Na'Vi. That's three for nil. Oh, Mikasa, you monster. You've been hiding it all game long. He's just been hurting six, eight, and seven, but he hits the waning rift in the coil when they need it the most. They don't lose a hero, they don't lose an Aegis, and they're ready to march down mid lane. Yeah, tough times now for Na'Vi. They'll be forced to shoot through some of these buybacks. Gyrocopter as well as the Queen of Pain, both with long respawn timers. And the big thing there is the Gyrocopter tanks the Omni Slash damage. He gets down to about half HP from it, but that's enough where the Enchantress, the Impetus is such a big threat at that point. They're not scared of a BKB Gyrocopter. They've got damage to go through the BKB. Call down. Trying to zone them out. Yang again does have the cheese. General bought back along with the gyro. 20 seconds on lasso. And Vici are actually going to back here. Yeah. They this... want to make sure they have Omni Slash and Gyrocopter buying back. They don't have a good way of getting him low without the Omni Slash. They've got to be that Omni Slash to start getting him into that danger territory and then followed up by the Enchantress with the Impetuses. Certainly fair. We're seeing that build from the Enchantress again, that MKB for FY. I think recognizing that Gyrocopter alone cannot kill this gyro and wants to make sure the evasion doesn't become a problem for him, so. And FY even taking the cheese. You can see who kind of is the carry here in the late game in some yeah. ways. FY first with Aegis, now with cheese. Very much a case where Juggernaut, the other carry, doesn't worry about survivability because of his itemization. Yeah, uh, by the way, good luck on ever getting a good lasso off. The Aether Lens now done on Venge. I'm hovering over, you know, you may want to show that to the audience for those who may be don't know that well. Look at look at the or over the over swap. Yeah. The oh, range, range on swap and then factor in Night Stalker's vision. It's uh, Be tough, tough going. Becomes a great initiation tool as well. When it's nighttime, you see the enemy, they don't see you, you swap them in. You can transition Puck into a hex later on if you want. The swap hex initiation is brutal for BKB core heroes. Like Gyrocopter may not even get a chance to BKB. Same for the Quop later on if you get swapped into that hex. But they've got a farmer hex, and right now it looks like Puck probably prioritizing a Lincoln's or with this Perseverance. I don't think we'll see him get anything else too crazy. Now he's going Battle Fury. I can see it yeah. coming. <laughs> I'll, make sure, I'll make sure you tell Coming him. to a pub game near you. <laughs> VG use Darkness, and they draw it out. It looks like they're ready to go at the top tier two. This yeah. will be the last remaining outer tier tower for Na'Vi. Only one tower remains for VGR as well. And we are definitely in five-man Dodo mode. We are very rarely seeing these two teams split up at this point. Vision, initiation, and response just so essential, even more so than a normal game. Gem does get found here. I believe that was a lost gem from the last fight yeah. recovered by <laughs> Suniko and Earth Spirit. Yep, this heard it. Somebody laid it down again. It looks like he doesn't want to. They've got another gem on bat, right? So they bought a gem, and they're like, oh, now we've got an extra. Let's just leave it back at base. Let's see if. We're going to have a response out of VGR. They see Get Your Raw farming here. Daytime hit, so possibly just see Navi take this tier two bottom tower. 
not the biggest deal for VGR to lose. It's nice because for upcoming Roche fights, it's a tower near the Roche and pit that does allow them easier access to contested or secure Roche, but it's just too risky to take a fight now with it being daytime and darkness was on cooldown. So no altitude towers remaining. Looking it's a game of bases now. They're looking for a quick pick here in the mid lane. Lasso into a sonic wave. Mikasa. Oh, no. Mikasa caught. This is going to be an easy one. Yeah, we've seen that one before. <laughs> yeah. I've read that book. That's reminiscent from the early game. We've seen it before, but not for a long time, AC. It's been Vichy Arm and Mikasa specifically having a good mid game, but a bit of that early game feed returning. Now they're pulled back. They had just used Darkness as well. I think they wanted to get aggressive there and now robbed of the opportunity to do so. And probably just going to farm a little bit longer. I, I, I can't blame them. I mean, in Na'Vi right now, I think Na'Vi's playing this about as well as they can. Yeah. They can overextend. Basically, one more big overextension, one more big loss, and it could be game. It could be just we're done. So they have to take what they can get when they can get it and not get greedy. Dendi hasn't actually purchased his, but he has money for BKB and buyback. I'm curious to see if he's considering other options. Now he picks up a Mithril Hammer. Should just be a BKB. Not really a situation where Desolator feels that good to me. If you're ahead and you're looking to be able to siege the base, then yeah, sure, but perhaps just holding on to a bit of extra cash. Vici once again doing an excellent job of robbing Navi of the jungle, making them play on a very, I mean, basically, every time they do this, they limit Navi to this area. This is about as much as they could possibly feel safe in. And, I mean, not only does that do things like cut off Roche, not that that's particularly relevant now, but it just makes it so Navi can't go get those one-off picks, those, okay, we can we can pick our way back into this, we, we have a good ganking lineup with a bad rider and Queen of Pain and Earth Spirit. Whenever you force them into that because of lack of vision, because of just taking their jungle over and, and forcing them to engage you five on five in a situation they don't want. I mean, you're going to win the farm war that way. However, did you raw? This get is a very important item, Satanic, yeah. because it just means when you get chunked down by that Omni Slash, that last fight in the jungle, if he has a Satanic there, he gets down to half HP, he starts attacking, he's back to full, and Enchantress doesn't finish him off. So VGR need to find some way to try and control the Gyrocopter when he gets low so he doesn't get any value out of this Satanic, but that's not the easiest thing to do with their lamp. They've got just the Venge stun, really, as far as lockdown goes. And even that may not be reliable. If Gyro gets a BKB off, he's going to be life stealing back up. Call down used for farming. Darkness used by Yang. I like it. Puck's actually gone back for a hex. I talked to, we saw the Perseverance and like, well, Perseverance, the only thing that makes sense is Lincoln's, but the swap hex is the important thing here. And also the hex onto the Gyrocopter. I talked about controlling him to prevent the Satanic from coming into play. The Hex will give VGR that. It looks like he even sold his Perseverance uh, to get, no, okay, he disassembled it to get the uh, Ring of Health back on the uh, Courier, but this is the important game-changing item for VGR, much like the Satanic for Navi is a big item for them. Now slowly, VGR beginning to close in, and we'll see if they're ready to engage this time or if they're gonna wanna, they may just wait out a Roshan. I mean, it's not that far away now. Yeah, absolutely. They either wait out a Roshan or wait out a key pick off. And if it comes down to if Navi put themselves in a position where the, the vision of Night Stalker sets up for that swap hex play. And DDC about to hit level 16. So that swap range is gonna get ridiculous very soon. Navi, <laughs> we basically watched them cycle like this a number of times. They go like this, they go like this, <laughs> they come back. And every time they do that, Navi retreats into the base. And as soon as they retreat, Navi comes back out. Like, we've watched them do this over and over again. Now here they go again, right back into the jungle. The Not saying it's minutes. ineffective. Ooh. I mean, it's they are controlling the map. They're yeah. keeping Navi in that little corner. And for Navi, like, they make these little movements to try and deward their side of the map. Anytime they kind of fall back, they know they give up map control, and it puts VG in a position where they can get those deep wards. So Navi want to keep putting themselves at least somewhat out there to maintain or well, to deny map vision from VGR. They've got a smoke here, so possibly waiting for when they feel VGR may go for Roshan to try and contest that one. As far as key items go, we mentioned the Satanic on the Gyrocopter. Elsewhere, not too much. Witch Doctor isn't, is close to an Ags or a BKB. Queen of Pain did purchase a BKB, so we'll see what they can get done here, but it's VGR who are actually headed directly towards DGR. Possible swap hex coming into play here. And they're gonna run in the Dindy first. Dindy, uh, no, he spotted Dindy. I don't know the they're Dindy. They're waiting for the swap. 
Oh, here we go. Going right in on Dindy. Dindy's the big target. Got him down to half health. There's going to be the call down. In the meantime, DDC taking a lot of damage. Sonic Wave will clean him up. And they're able to turn this on VGR. Did your raw doing good damage. Deployed the Satanic. And End is going to be forced to run. Already used his Omni Slash. Didn't get anything out of it. And he's going to drop. Navi. Wow. Great team fight. Sniffing it out and playing it well. Yeah, they had everyone there. And that's why Navi, every time they make these movements out of their base, it's always as five. Boulder Smash slightly misses Yang, but they could look to chase him down. I feel like VGR make a mistake there initiating with a Blink Hex. They want to use the swap to initiate as much as they it puts it on cooldown when you're against the Batrider. If you pull that one hero, like a, a key hero like Dendi, so far away from his team, he just dies. And you're not scared of the Blink Lasso when right. Dendi's dead. But what you are scared of is being in this 5v5 fight around Na'Vi's heroes. Around, around Calldown. Yeah, they, they initiate into Na'Vi instead of pulling one Na'Vi hero out. What the, the Swap Hex does, it's effectively oh, a Oh, they find FY over by the side oh, shot. Okay. Roll past him, don't think it's gonna matter. General's got a Lasso He's if it comes no to escape. that. I don't even know that it's going to. Nope, Dendi says, I got this. And Sonic Wave, FY, still farming. <laughs> Trying to farm as he knew his death had arrived. This is going to be an Aegis and a Cheese. And Ooh, they have not smoke. the crowd favorites. You can hear them. You can feel them, I'm sure. As this place has once again awakened. Navi have come alive here. At the heart of CIS Dota, I feel this. The heart. The, I, I think you're Ladder, right. It is. Cyber Sports Arena. This is <laughs> the soul or the heart, whatever you want to call it, for CIS Dota. This is where like Navi grew up. Yep. This is their backyard, and they aren't letting VTR take over just yet. They're not letting them walk away with the championship just yet. They but, still have a bit of fight left in them. We're back to just a 6,000 net worth advantage. Not sure what the crowd's cheering about. Terrifies me every time that yeah, happens. Yeah, I hear something. I'm like, kind of panic. Panic. <laughs> Exactly. What? I start getting, what? What's going on here? Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Let's see a recap here. Enchantress. Yeah, you're not safe in those trees. Got him. That kick. FY. I actually missed on the boulder rolls. <laughs> the funny thing. But that's okay, because the job got done. And Art Style completes an Aghanim Scepter. He gets some farm time and... I believe that is what the crowd's cheering for this time. Uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> We're they, maybe, they saw it. maybe they saw it on the courier yeah. or something. Well, Navi, let's see if they're ready to come out of their corner. Punishment's Whoa, over, boys. Oh, boy. That That's is a, a teacher big special. They've got Aegis with it. They've got the protection. Teacher has Satanic, too. He's not going to die to an Omni Slash. He's actually in a fantastic position to utilize this Divine Rapier to its full potential. And look, they're hiding it. They're not, there's no way VGR expects this. There's absolutely no way. Here we go. It's daytime for a little bit longer. Night Stalker holding on to the ultimate until the East Shore fight's about to break out. And Na'Vi going to be forcing this. DHRI will reveal the Rapier now. Glyph already coming out. Panic time, how they do need you go the swap about hex. this? It's the DDC swap. He there goes in. And now they're going to go to Digirog. Again, this is with the Aegis. Oh, and General's going to end up blown up as well. The Omni Slash is going to town. Diddy has to get out, but get ready. Here he comes. Rapier is up. Can they do anything to him? This is bad for Na'Vi. Digirog's BKB going to wear off. Oh, he's going to be caught. Oh, the Rapier. Sonic Wave. Diddy with one scream may have just bought them a little more time in this oh, game. No. They've lost the Rapier, though. It hits the deck. FY did huge oh. right-click damage. He has no buyback. Witch Picked Doctor up. tried to save the day, but couldn't do it. Picked up by, by end. Oh, that, the swap hex. <sighs> the biggest problem there was that he used his Satanic before dying with Aegis. He saved his BKB, but needed the yes. BKB and Satanic for when he came back. Once BKB wore off, he didn't have the Satanic for that extra bit of protection. He also just has no way to get close to FY. FY is just sitting back, chunking away at him with those impetuses and buyback status, zero for Na'Vi. It's Dendi and Dendi alone looking to take out the creep wave from behind. He does have buyback, but the creep uh, wave enters the base. It does have buyback, but End has a rapier. They have a glyph. If they are able to weather oh, this, oh, this is heartbreaking somehow. for Navi fans. If they're able to weather this somehow and even extend the game, it'll be because of that a great Sonic Wave Dendi hit. 
that forced two buybacks, one out of the jug and one out of uh, Puck. And VGR are also respecting the fact they don't know that Jaro has no buyback here. They do know, uh, you are probably considering, considering the rape you purchased, but now with four heroes alive and Aghanim's death ward, that last fight almost was like an ultra kill for Artstyle with that death ward. Two heroes survived on a sliver of HP, unfortunately for Na'Vi. VGR want to re-engage though. This Jug has to be very careful about how he approaches the fight with a Rapier. If that gets back into Na'Vi's hands, suddenly this game will continue on. And Na'Vi's high ground defense is something that VGR will have to respect. The Batrider's ability to pull heroes in deep. Yep. Even with the swap to save, VGI, they really want to be using this swap to initiate. So they've got a kind of decisions to make as they approach these fights. It's very easy when you're defending your high ground to use your swap to initiate, but when you're the ones pushing, it's much harder to right. take that approach. Let's see what they want to do. Looks like the same old pattern. Just a matter of how it's going to translate. A lot of farm there for Dichiram. Oh, DDC's right there, had swap too. They, they, Mikasa wasn't there though. Oh. They, they need the hex. If Mikasa was there Jeez. a fraction sooner, that could have actually just been a kill in the game. End just crit a creep for 13 hundo. Put that in perspective, that's almost a one shot on our art style if it's cleaved. <laughs> so that is ridiculous. Although, you know, in fairness, Navi is pretty damn tanked up. I mean, it is 54 minutes in, so no shock that that's the case. But oh, here we go. There it is. They catch Jitjira. He's down. Oh, he's life stealing? No. Not enough. Not enough. Sonic Wave is going to be there. Navi holding serve as best they can. DDC may end up dropping, but Dindy's going to have to blink back. Now they're just chucking away. There's a lasso from General. Wow, an oh. Epidus from way downtown. Cleans him up. FY tallies a triple kill. Four dead, zero buybacks. Dendi alone. And just a Night Stalker dead on the VGR side. This may be Navi's oh, final breath. Caught. And the, he's brought down Art Style now, standing alone. Buyback some Dindy. They've got to get this kill. He has a hex up. But swap coming up very soon. There we go. Oh, Art Style again, just being busted by the impetus. Dindy now. They bring Art Style down. That's four and down, and they're down Maladin? for the count. He's actually going to die here. Blade Fury, oh, just in time. <laughs> so close. And Dendi has Sonic Wave, but he can't afford to put himself in a position where he's going to die. To, if he tries to blink Sonic Wave in, he dies without buyback. It's surely game over. And N now healing back up the healing war. This is just devastating for Na'Vi. Tier 3 top. They're looking for Mega's gods. They're Dendi looking. needs company. He's all alone. and I believe... He's... They may just have to pay a little extra at the airport. They may have some hardware to ship. As they go to work on the tier fours, Seneko's back up. He'll do what, what he can. Tier fours are down. They're going to go back in for one last hurrah. Mikasa will be caught. He's going to be lassoed in, going to work. Seneko's back down. Sonic Wave caught nothing but a BKB jug. The only hope is to kill this jug now. You're up against Megas. You've got to try and find that pickoff. Get the gyrocopter, the agent, get the, uh, the rapier back. DDC finds a double gem, but <laughs> he'll feed away his life. But they salvage the, gyro the, uh, the gyrocopter's previous divine rapier on the juggernaut now. Navi have a throw left. That's it. They are literally playing defend the ancient. That's it. That's all I got to defend. If anything, game should be easier, right? All I got to do is sure. defend an ancient now. You, as long as your ancient's still standing, you're, you're yeah, fulfilling you're, your objective. You're, you winning. <laughs> you're winning. It. You're winning at defend well, the ancient. Well, by that metric, VGR also still winning. <laughs> Their ancient's still standing. Well, and We're not talking about VGR, OK? We're right. talking, <laughs> we're talking about fine. Exactly. It's all, it's all just. <laughs> All right, jokes aside. We're on the Navi Kool-Aid right now. <laughs> I mean, how can you not be, dude? Like you said, I, I actually think you captured it. We are in the mecca of CIS Doto, especially with this team on stage. And, uh, well, I mean, we can look at the graphs, but the graphs only tell us what we've been watching. Yeah, and this plummet is very much the, the rapier swap. That's a yep. 12,000 net worth exchange just in that one little play. So see what Navi can do. Dichara. At this point, he's thinking, like, what do I need to do, what do I need to, do to afford a new rapier? If they're not <laughs> going to give me my old one back, I'll hit up the store and just pick up a fresh one. But you get such little farm from these mega creeps. Getting there is going to be the big challenge for him. Getting there really comes down to VGR giving up some kills. And I imagine VGR, they can play this safe. Roche is respawning in about a minute's time. And there's a DD. If they want to guard it, they will probably be able to about five-shot Roche. It, 
Yeah, they've only got 30 seconds with it, though. It, it will uh, expire in 30 seconds, so. We'll see what the plan's going to be as far as that goes. Puck gets a, a Lincoln Sphere now, so they can protect themselves against that Batrider Lasso bit, which means the swap can be used offensively even easier because you can then just pop the Lincolns on someone like the Jug who you're afraid of going down. Jug bought a backup Rapier, by the way. I'm like, uh, I saw I, a Rapier I, tick up. I'm like, huh? Didn't you have a Rapier? I, I, I don't know if you noticed. I was going like this on my screen trying to draw your yeah. attention to it. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's some good stuff. So if he dies, he can buy back, have another Rapier, and then keep Boots of Travel 2 into the fight. He even has the Moonshot already activated as well. There's, there's nothing this Jug doesn't need. Rush back up. 30 seconds. And nothing. I mean, I, I, okay, good. I was going to say, I hope Navi, like, there's something in, like just generally inglorious about sitting in the base and waiting to be steamrolled. Go take a fight, man. Go, go down swinging. That's exactly what they're doing. And you've earned it. I mean, and regardless of the outcome, Navi has gotten everyone's attention. And here we go. There's Roche. Jeez, look at FY. That attack speed, though. And he even still had the DD. <laughs> Perfectly timed. Oh, boy. All right, that's down. And you can see VGR knowing they do not want to let this game go back in Na'Vi's way. They just camped themselves in Roche, waited for it to respawn, get the Aegis and the Cheese. Aegis on Enchantress, the actual big damage dealer in these fights coming out. Jug can just kind of front line. Only Slash does a lot. Enchantress will do almost as much damage as a Jug to heroes with the Impetus, though, at this stage of the game. Last hurrah, last stand. Detroit has a buyback. I guess you can consider holding on for him. Not much you can really buy with just your 4K gold. You could consider something like a Crystallis. If you could get Crystallis plus buyback, it might be worth it, but... How about Treads? Sure, <laughs> Treads, why not? <laughs> Sounds good. brown boots. He probably wants to have a boots of travel oh, like sure. at some point. Like if, if you win a fight, you want the boots of travel to get there. But yeah, you know, anything you can scrap together. More importantly, he wants to save that money for a rapier. So <laughs> rapier is the answer if you teach your. Uh, uh, if I, I'll, I'll tell you what the tip is. Go get it the easy way. Just go take his. Hijack, hijack the one from yeah. the stash. No, 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 no. Just go kill. <laughs> yeah. Just go kill Jug. It's fine. Easy. Just defend your ancient and kill the Juggernaut. Done. Sounds like a plan. Well, Vichy. Vichy, they have their own plan. They got a plan, too. Look Here out for go. that Venge swap. He's got Ags, too. So even if DDC dies, he'll have a second swap. He almost wants to die, apply the Vengeance Aura, and then have a second Vengeful Spirit Illusion that he can use swap with, as well as provide some additional control. Doesn't want Art Style. Immediately swap. Look at the damage. Never had a chance. Art Style will be Omni Slash, eating damage from behind. Did your raw standing as long as he can. Use the Satanic. He's down. There's going to be the Lasso dragging DDC back to the fountain. But that's three down, buyback from Dit Yaraw. DDC, nope, GG. And like a bolt of lightning streaking across the Ukrainian night, VGR swoop in. Not quite the, the climactic ending, but VGR, the champions, the best team on final day. What a performance. What a team with a stand in. Yep, with a coach, Coach Mid. I'll tell you the secret the C. It stands for carry, not coach. <laughs> and VGR. Well, there are a lot a of disappointed people here, for sure. Well. But there are a lot of people that should be impressed, including us. And I know we're impressed with this young VGR squad. I'm impressed with Navi, too. I mean, hats off to them. They, oh, yeah. They rode the momentum. They had the crowd here. They played some of the best Dota we've seen from this team in a long while. But it's VGR who just surprised everyone coming out of nowhere. They even had a rough start in the turn. When they lost to Na'Vi, that's the biggest thing. They got 2-0 crushed by Na'Vi. If yep. you go back to day number two, yep. doesn't phase them. They go up against Na'Vi again. Even the game they lost was so close, so competitive, and VGR just phenomenal here in victory. And that right there is their reward, standing next to it, getting lined up on the stage. And again, you know, these, these young guys, just so impressive. Who's your MVP, would you say? Like, who, who stood the, out for you, Aaron? Of the entire series? Entire tournament. Tournament MVP. FY. Yeah, I'm, I'm be. torn between FY has and to. End. End has just been the key player for me as far as all his movements go, but FY is the captain. It's like 50 50. I, I, I'll go with you. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. and my co cast. Well, FY just. Well, he had a little bit he's of. He's the one who put this team together. Like, he right. deserved credit for what he did as far as. Just direct, like directing the team as their draft. Obviously, the coach Mikasa had some input there. Mikasa was the 
surprise, the big surprise of the tournament. Looks like we're going to the stage. Congratulate the winners. Oh, no. no. Well, it looks like our guys standing and being cheered and enjoying the crowd. <laughs> this crowd is actually crazy, and I, I, I love that, you know, as many of these fans happen to be Navi fans, everyone's still with their cameras out, everyone's still clapping and cheering, recognizing that. Yeah, they're, they're quiet in Navi's defeat, but when these teams came out at the start of the match, they were cheering on every single team alike, and even now, that's the re Again, that's the reward. These guys are going to be feeling good, you know. Major right. season coming up, TI later on. They, Even though they're playing with a standing here, I feel like this is a sign that VGR, they've been dominating in online matches. They come here, win their first title. In my and, mind, and there's no doubt they deserve an invite to the Manila Major. I, I, that's exactly what I was going to say, and not a moment too soon. They're, like, they're going to be one of those hot teams going into the Major. You know how usually you have a couple of, like, not necessarily dark horses or sleeper picks, but trendy picks of who's going to do well? Uh, you know, yes, I understand EG and Secret weren't here. It doesn't matter. Like, you can watch a team and see how they perform. It's not as if the teams they were up against, LGD and OG and Alliance, are tier two here. You know what I mean? They're not EG and they're not Secret. Well, some of the teams here were in that major talk anyways. You have exactly. MVP Phoenix guaranteed an invite, more or less. You have OG, who was, like, very close to being, like, a, a kind of lock for the next major as well. So VGR have made a huge huge surprise here with their victory and I, I gotta say these guys have just they've won me over just with their brand of dota their aggression it's like watching just how they play together as a team and how they work has just been phenomenal and starlight i mean has just put on another fantastic event this has just been a, a true pleasure to be here and i'm just so glad you could join us ac it's been Oh, I, I, tell you, I picked a good one. And no pressure at all, by the way. It's like, oh, yeah, you haven't cast in a land in a couple years. You haven't done any casting at all in a year. Why don't you show up at Star Ladder and do a Grand Finals? Hey, you nailed it, buddy. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's thanks to you. And, yeah, I want to take this moment to thank Star Ladder, of course, and thank you in particular and uh, the rest of BTS LD. Certainly, I wouldn't be here without you guys. And thanks to everyone at home as well. It's been uh, an unbelievable trip for me. Hopefully, this will be the first of many more in the future. Schedules are weird, life's weird, but I'm addicted again. It's uh, the needles back in the vein. You've so. got the Dota itch. It only gets better, you know. The major coming up. Talk of a new patch. Things are going to start freshening up. I mean, this we did see all kinds of new crazy picks. I don't even feel like if someone told me like, oh, it's the same patch being played. It did not feel that way. So I said, new crazy picks. It is TI2 meta. Yep. Are you kidding me? <laughs> anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for us. I am AC, and that's Gods. We're going to be throwing it back to the panel for their wrap up once again. Our champions, VGR defeating Na'Vi 3-1. Stick with us. We'll be right back with the panel's breakdown. E-gaming bets. We accept bets on